Hello YouTube viewers and random Robot Wars fans. Now today I'm going to show you how to build a small cardboard model of the Robot Behemoth, which is roughly in the same scale as the uh, pullback toys. In order to build Behemoth, you will need the following. Uh, some black duct tape. Uh, some sellotape. A black pen. A uh, grey colouring in pencil. A yellow colouring in pencil. A black colouring in pencil, a black marker, and a ruler. Obviously, you're also going to need some cardboard. Now, you can use something like a frozen pizza box, that sort of thing. But uh, honestly, I prefer this tissue, this type of tissue box here, mainly because of uh, the size of it, and uh, also because it's very thin card, which works well. Uh, you can use just normal card as well, of course, or any type of cardboard, but. Uh, that's the type of cardboard I would suggest, nice and thin. Most importantly, you also need these, which are the uh, rough instructions that I've drawn out, uh, which tell you all the different uh, panels you're going to need, all the measurements, what have you, there are two of them, and uh, you can uh, download, those, uh, download those and print them off from the uh, little address below. Okay, first of all, I'm going to have to show you how to open the box. Now, you're going to want to open it like a normal cereal box, so... Pull the sides open, like that, uh, pull out all the, all the flaps, like that and so forth, so you can see the whole way through it. Now, you're going to take uh, the side which has the little lip, see the join, where uh, the two bits of cardboard join together. You want to go take that and use your scissors to cut the whole way along the end seam there. So as you can see with the cut open, you can open the entire box out like that, and you also get this sort of little double... Uh, extra thick strip along the bottom here, uh, which we're going to use later. So next of all, you're going to want to take a pair of scissors and slice this part off here. So as you can see now, with that separated, we have two separate panels. Now this one is the one we're going to be using mainly, so we'll put that to one side. Uh, don't throw this one out, we're going to use this one. Uh, what we're going to do is slice that extra thick strip that I was talking about off. Okay, once you've sliced that off, as you can see, you can now uh, dispose of this and recycle it. Uh, we now have this extra thick strip of card. So set that to the side for the time being, and uh, that's us ready to go. Okay, so take that large piece of cardboard we were talking before and talking about before, and draw all of your little shapes here from the uh, instructions that you printed off. So uh, the base, uh, the back, everything, uh, draw that all out to scale and uh, put it on to the cardboard so we'll have something that looks like this. And presto, by the magic of the internet, it's all drawn on. Also, once you've drawn on, colour it in as well. As you can see, I've put uh, the yellow onto the little scoop and uh, uh, coloured all the other parts in black. Then what you want to do is you're going to take your sellotape and uh, you're going to take a piece of it and you want to cover the entire front, uh, this entire front section with all your designs on it, cover the whole thing in sellotape. Now this is to protect the robot once it's built and just makes it look a lot more neater and shinier and uh, it lasts a lot longer too and protects it from dust. So cover the whole section on this side with sellotape. Also what you're going to do is on the back section here, as you can see I've already done, use your black duct tape and it has to be black, this uh, duct tape here, uh, tear a bit off Let's see. and uh, put it over the uh, the cardboard on the back, so you've got this black, and this is uh, to keep your model once it's built more stable. Now the next step is cutting everything out. Sorry, yes, forgot to mention. Uh, remember your thick strip from before. Now this strip you're gonna keep special because this is what you want to put your. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. You want to put your axe head, uh, your axe shaft. And uh, your buckets, both your bucket support beams uh, onto this, so we have something that looks like this. As you can see, there's the two bucket support beams, there's your axe head, and there's your axe shaft. So uh, do the same with this as you did with the other sheet, cover it in sellotape and cover the back with duct tape. Okay, and once you have all your uh, parts cut off, you can see on the front here, they're all laminated, so uh, it protects them from damage. And also around the back here, they're covered in duct tape too, which also allows you to uh, keep them nice and tough and robust. Now the first thing you want to do is take your back panel here, your uh, bo your bottom panel, and attach it to your back panel uh, like this. So uh, put some cell tape on, and they will be joined 
together like that as you can see so then you go and put your front panel on and your side panels a little point to note before you actually attach your side panels is uh, see this little line here that separates them uh, you're going to take your scissors and run them along this line which will then hopefully allow you to bend them a lot easier like uh, like that Anyway, when you've done that, your base should look like this. Now you're going to want to fold all these panels up together and tip them together. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this and already you can sort of see bare moth starting to come together. Uh, now you're going to want to add your base top, which is this, sec this section sorry, uh, on top of there. Okay, now that's attached, as you can see here, we can now build that weird sort of box section you can see at the front of Bear Moth whenever the scoop lifts up. As you can see, I have one of the inner sides here. Be sure to build yourself an opposing inner side, uh, just use a mirror image of the uh, one that I've showed you in the instructions. Okay, so as you can see, that's the uh, side panels on. And this is it with the top and front panel now attached. Okay, now let's move on to the bucket scoop. So uh, this is your top panel here, as you can see I've coloured it in to uh, put the axe on. Uh, you're going to want to take that and take your two little thick black bits, uh, which are the main bucket scoop support at the uh, sides here that we made from the thick cardboard, and attach those to either side of this. Okay, and once you have those connected, we're now going to add the uh, front part uh, to this. Okay, and once you have that attached, the front section should look like this. Now it's time to add the axe. Now you attach your axe head to the shaft just by using some sellotape there. Then you're going to take a little bit of sellotape, put it on the axe so it's not fully on the axe, just covering a bit of it. Wrap that around so the sticky part's covered. And this will create a little hinge for you. So that when you put it onto the top here, as you can see, it sort of slots into place. You're going to pull that down over the front, this little lip here, and tape that into place. And when you do that, as you can see, obviously the axe now can swing over freely. So now it's time to add the bucket. So you're going to want to take the scoop here and you're going to want to roll it up into a cylinder. Like so. Nice and tight. So when you unroll it, it's in scoop form, which is nice and rounded, so now you can attach that to the front of the bucket. Okay, now as you can see, the front bucket is attached. Now it's time to attach it to your base. So as you can see, if you slide it over here, bear moth uh, is sort of complete. So what you're going to do is take some sellotape. Remember what I told you to do with the axe? Well, do that again with your back panel. So as you can see, there's a bit of tape there. And what you want to do with that is sort of fold it round here and attach it in place onto this top panel with some tape so when it slides down it's going to be in place. Okay and once your bucket's attached, you can, as you can see Behemoth this sort of now complete. Also remember to add your little yellow side panels. But uh, of course now it's time to show you how to do the little self riders on the side as you can see in this Behemoth here. It has the little lifters so uh, I'll show you how to make those now. Uh, you attach them in pretty much the same way I showed you how to attach the axe on the actual bucket scoop. So you can see, take a bit of cell tape, wrap it around so you have this sort of tag at the end here. Uh, give this a little bit of a bend too there, so it's at a bit of an angle. Then you attach it, as you can see there, so it hangs freely. Now of course you're going to need something to pull the wings up whenever you lift the bucket. So another little fine piece of sellotape here, as you can see, attach one bit to the wing and one bit to the uh, panel on the top. And once you've done that, as you can see, whenever Behemoth lifts the slipper, his little wings rise up, which is cool. And there you have them, there's Behemoth, and as you can see, not too different to the one that I built several years ago as a kid. So uh, there you go, try it for yourself, and uh, if you do build it, make a little video of it, because I'd love to see if other people have had any luck building it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If I've said anything too quickly or you're not too clear on one of the steps in order to build Bamoth, please feel free to leave me a message or uh, send me an email and uh, hopefully I'll be able to fix that for you. So thanks very much for watching and remember, get building. Thanks for watching. Bye.